As you can see, this virtual machine has failed to boot. The virtual machine is displaying a kernel panic. We are in the Azure Serial Console, but we do not have access to Grub, as this machine is an old RHEL 7.2 VM, which was not configured with Grub access. So the next step in order to recover this virtual machine is to run a bunch of Microsoft developed scripts. These scripts will automate the process of taking a snapshot of the VM and attaching that snapshot to a newly created rescue VM, which is automated. You can then SSH into that VM and make the changes required, such as modifying Grub. You then detach the disk and run other scripts which will perform a disk swap of your original VM's OS disk with the manipulated OS disk. To access Cloud Shell, on the top of the screen here, you will press this button here and it will pop up an additional window at the bottom of the screen. And here you have the ability to either select PowerShell or bash. For this demo, we're going to use the PowerShell version. The versions of the scripts which we will use throughout this demo are hosted in GitHub. This is the PowerShell version. And we also have a bash version. So the procedure is the same for, for both versions pretty much. Um, and what it will do is stop the problematic VM, takes a snapshot of the VM, creates a temporary VM called a rescue VM, attaches the problematic VM's OS disk as a data disk to the rescue VM. Then once you connect via SSH to the new rescue VM, we can investigate or make changes if we know what exactly we want to achieve. We then detach the problematic VM's OS disk from the rescue VM and with some recovery scripts which are supplied, it will perform a disk swap and will um, restore the state of your original uh, VM. So to kick this off, I've changed my working directory as specified in the PowerShell document. Because I've run this before, I'm going straight to step six. I already have the bits which you need to clone if this is the first time you're running running it. And the command to run after you've changed your working directory is new Azure RM rescue VM1, uh, vm.ps1 with the resource group name and the virtual machine name. So I've got that running already. And as you can see here, I've kicked that off. Um, what you will be prompted for is a username uh, and password to enter for your new machine, which is going to be created as a rescue VM. And here I've entered the username of Azure Admin uh, with a uh, memorable password. And this has gone and stopped the VM and will continue to create um, a resource group named Rescue, preceding the name of the VM with a resource group of Rescue and a VM of Rescue. Um, and that will take some time. So I'll pause for now. As you can see here, it's created the um, Rescue VM in a resource group. So it's continuing with creating that for now. Okay, so that completed cleanly. Um, we can see the rescue VM name and the resource group has been created. It gives us all our IDs of our data disks and we can scroll to the bottom and it tells us exactly what the next steps are required. So it tells you here to connect to the rescue uh, rel SSL virtual machine, which we will do shortly. Um, and at the bottom to clean up once you've restored the recovered disk and perform the disk swap, you can remove the rescue uh, VM by running this script. So now we will connect to the 
recovery VM. So back over on the portal now, you can see the rescue rail SSL has been created. So I'm just going to connect to that. We could connect via SSH over the public IP address, or I'm going to attempt to use the serial console. And as you can see, the recovery VM by default is an Ubuntu 16.04. You can choose a different recovery VM OS distro to be created for you. Um, but that is, I believe, with the bash script and you can pass it different versions and distributions if required. But for this demo, this should be sufficient. So I'm just going to log on. Become root. Run an F disk minus L. And you can see that we have an SDC, which will be our attached data disk. Whereas SDA is the primary disk of the local recovery VM. So if we do a DF minus H, we can see that SDA is the primary disk and SDC, which is attached but not mounted, is our um, our recovery disk, our data disk, our ROS disk. So the next thing is to mount the disk partitions from the attached OS disk locally to this machine, which will allow us to enter a rooted environment. So I'm going to make a directory called rescue and we will mount the OS partition, which in this case is SDC2. And we can see that it's SDC2 because the boot flag you know, with an asterisk is set to SDC1. So first we mount the OS disk or OS partition. And then we will mount SDC1 on top of boot. And this will give us two partitions. So now if we do DF minus H, we can see these are two additional partitions. Now we go into rescue partition and we start to mount our additional partitions of a true root environment. Okay. So now if we go into the rescue directory using this command to root, you'll see that your environment changes and you have the partitions which are for your attached OS disk which allows you to perform recovery procedures. So now what we will do is we will change the entry in the grub configuration to use a previous kernel. So the kernel I was previously booting from, which was failing, is one of these kernels here, which was, if I remember correctly, this one here, 957, 310, 957. And so that was failing, and we will change grub to boot from the previous kernel. So now that we're in the Cherooted environment, we have gone into the slash boot slash grub2 directory where we can see we have a grub.cfg. And if we um, have a look at the entries in that grub.cfg using this command, walk minus F, searching for menu entry, and print out field 2, what we can see is we have three different kernel versions set or configured to boot from. So what we'll do is grub to set default to one, which will actually be this one here. And then we have to run grub to make config. 
like this. And that rebuilds your your files for your system to boot from. So now you can exit the true root environment, CD up to the root directory, and we can start to unmount all the partitions that we were using. The first one is umount slash rescue proc. U mount rescue slash sys U mount rescue dev pts U mount rescue dev and the last two partitions to mount are obviously our rescue partitions which is U mount rescue boot mount point not found because I've got an S missing and rescue hopefully that will come clean okay so now our disk is uh, completely unmounted which leaves us free to replace the original virtual machines OS disk with this copy that we've just been working with and we do provide scripts to um, to automate that process which was part of the scripts that you downloaded at the very beginning so now that we've unattached the OS disk from our temporary machine we go back to cloud shell and we will re we'll run a uh, script which is restore underscore rel ssl dot ps1 as you can see it has removed the data disk from the virtual machine rescue rel ssl it's now stopping the rel ssl machine and swapping its os disk And after a few minutes, you will see the completion of the uh, swapping of the OS disk. And this took four minutes. So now we'll go and check our recovered VM. So I've just gone to the serial console of RHEL SSL. It's the machine that we recovered. And as you can see, it's running on the older kernel. So we can log back onto the machine now. I'm just going to become root. You can see the kernel that we are running is 3.10.0.3.2.7. And if we query which kernels are on the system, 3.2.7.9.5.7. And that is the one that we reverted from. So I hope this has been of some help. Thanks very much.